A warm greeting? Today is Monday, June 17, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. At the time of recording this video, it is 3 p.m. local time in Tamaulipas and 4 p.m. local time in Texas, where a tropical storm watch has been issued for the recently designated potential Cyclone 1. This system is Invest 91, which has gained organization today over the waters of the Bay of Campeche and is associated with the Central American Gyre currently situated over Central America. A Hurricane Hunter aircraft is investigating the area and has found that the disturbance has organized significantly in the last few hours. Although it still lacks a closed circulation, it is expected to continue a slow process of organization over the next few days as it approaches eastern Tamaulipas. As it is anticipated to arrive in approximately 48 hours, the National Hurricane Center has decided to designate this area as potential Cyclone 1. We now have the first official forecasts from the National Hurricane Center. Before continuing to talk about the official forecast, I wanted to show you the westward wind flow moving over Central America, particularly over southern Guatemala and El Salvador, where rains continue, and additional rainfall is expected throughout the rest of the week. Later, I will be recording a video to discuss the rainfall accumulations we can anticipate for Central America this week. But in this video, I will be focusing on the region of Texas and Tamaulipas, which will see the direct and indirect effects of what may become Tropical Storm Alberto. Let's look at the infrared satellite animation where we can see the development of strong thunderstorms across the Yucatan Peninsula and over parts of the states of Tabasco and Chiapas. Heavy downpours and flooding have been reported overnight and today. The center of circulation of potential Cyclone 1 is now located over the waters of the Bay of Campeche. From here on, it should gradually gain organization. However, this process will be quite slow. Remember, as I mentioned, the circulation is very broad and the National Hurricane Center notes that the process of consolidating a defined center will be slow. This is typical of tropical cyclones that originate from a Central American gyre, and while we are projecting it to become a tropical depression or tropical storm before reaching Tamaulipas, we cannot rule out that it may never develop into a tropical cyclone. Regardless, tropical storm conditions are expected to affect eastern Texas and northern Tamaulipas. In this image, you can see the mission of the Hurricane Hunter aircraft, which has not yet found a defined center of circulation, but we do have a broad circulation. Therefore, more organization is needed for the National Hurricane Center to classify this disturbance as a tropical cyclone. However, they have found some tropical storm force winds located well to the north of the circulation. And for this reason, a tropical storm watch has been issued for Texas and Tamaulipas, as these winds are expected to affect the region between Wednesday and Thursday. In this image, you can see the specialized model trajectories. You can see that a slow northward trajectory is projected for the next 48 hours. During the night hours of Tuesday and the morning of Wednesday, this system is expected to accelerate towards the coast of Tamaulipas. It is estimated to arrive in the early morning hours of Thursday as a tropical storm with winds between 40 to 45 miles per hour. And although the center of circulation's trajectory appears to be over central Tamaulipas, the most active part of this system will remain north of Tamaulipas and over the Texas coast. It is important to remember this because the effects of this potential tropical cyclone will be felt significantly north of the center of circulation. In terms of intensity, the models project that it will have gradual strengthening for at least the next 48 hours. All agree that it should remain as a weak or moderate tropical storm. Again, this is due to the very broad circulation, which will make the intensification process difficult, as it will be hard for it to develop a compact center. Let's look at the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center. Notice that it projects the system will continue as a non-tropical cyclone at least until Tuesday afternoon. Eventually, between Tuesday night and early Wednesday morning, it could become Tropical Storm Alberto. It will then continue on a west-northwest trajectory until it reaches Tamaulipas. Also, see in orange or yellow what represents the sustained tropical storm force winds located just to the west and northwest of the Yucatan Peninsula, and you can see that it is displaced to the northeast of the circulation. This is the reason why, although the center would be entering over central Tamaulipas, the tropical storm watch has been issued for northern Tamaulipas and parts of southeastern Texas. This means quite a distance from the center of circulation towards the north and northeast. Let's look at the latest projections from the global models. The GFS model still projects that a maximum vorticity would develop to the north of the circulation and reach southern Texas. This is a scenario we cannot rule out and will be closely monitoring over the next few days. Also, note how the model maintains a fairly broad circulation and forecasts that it should not strengthen much over the next 48 to 72 hours. This is mentioned by the National Hurricane Center as the main reason for this forecast. Also, see the European model which has a similar scenario. However, this time it consolidates the center of circulation much further south, reaching Tamaulipas during the morning hours of Thursday. This is very similar to the projection of the National Hurricane Center. It seems that the National Hurricane Center is following the projection of the European model more closely. They also mention that the GFS model projection is still a possibility. 
residents of eastern and southern Texas should stay alert to the bulletins over the next few days. Also, see the projection of the German model, which continues to project a tropical storm entering near the Tamaulipas-Texas border during the night hours of Wednesday and early Thursday morning. Under this scenario, note that the GFS model is projecting rainfall accumulations that could be over 24 inches during the next four to five days in central and southern Texas. We are talking about over two feet of rain in a short period of time. For this reason, it is important for people in Texas to pay close attention to the projections, because if the GFS model's projection holds, we would be looking at a significant flooding event across the region. Another scenario, perhaps a bit more realistic, is the projection of the European model which projects that 4 to 6 inches of rain could fall along the Texas coast. Since this model has a trajectory much further south compared to the GFS model, it also brings significant rainfall to parts of Tamaulipas, San Luis Potosi, Nuevo León, Coahuila, and Zacatecas in Mexico. In this case, we would be looking at 100 to 200 millimeters of rain from Wednesday to Saturday this week. This rain will definitely be welcome to alleviate the drought. But these excessive rainfall amounts can cause significant flooding across the region, including in cities like Monterey and Ciudad Victoria. If we move a little further south, note that rainy days are also projected for southern Mexico, including regions in southern Veracruz, Tabasco, Campeche, Yucatan, Quintana Roo, Chiapas, Oaxaca, and Guerrero. For this area, 50 to 100 millimeters of rain is anticipated from today until next Friday. If we look at the projections of wind gusts, the GFS model, with a more northward trajectory, has the strongest wind gusts affecting the Texas coast with winds between 45 to 50 miles per hour, which is quite close to the forecast from the National Hurricane Center. Note that the projection of the European model also has winds between 40 to 45 miles per hour, affecting the Texas coast and northern Tamaulipas. The wind should not be a major concern, but rather the rain, as it can cause flooding across eastern and northern Mexico, as well as the coastal and southern regions of Texas. Well, that's all for this update. Stay tuned to Hurricane Info as I will continue to update this forecast. I will record the next video during Tuesday morning to bring you the latest updates. It is important to check if you are subscribed to my channel. Go to the bottom of the video, click on the red button that says subscribe, and then click on the bell to receive notifications when I upload new videos. Also, know that you can support my project by becoming a channel member. If you are interested, go to the bottom of the video, click on the blue button that says join, and you will see different sponsorship plans where you can help my project and receive some additional benefits. Well, with that, I bid you farewell. The next video will be to talk about the rainfall accumulations and floods that will continue to affect Central America, especially Southern Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, and Western Nicaragua. See you later.